2010 17-inch MacBook Pro CPU heatsink replacement. Start off by shutting down and flipping over your MacBook. Remove the cover that's fastened with 10 Phillips head screws. Remove the 7 Phillips head screws that are short first, starting in the top left and going around the contour of the MacBook. Now the three long Phillips head screws. Lift and remove the cover. Begin by disconnecting the battery first. Logic board removal. Start off by removing the left fan. The left fan is attached with three Phillips head screws. Go ahead and unscrew those screws but leave them in place as this will make it easier to track all the screws that you take apart. Lift up on the fan and disconnect it from the logic board. Remove the right fan. It's also connected with three Phillips head screws. This particular fan didn't want to come out, so we went ahead and disconnected each Phillips head screw and put it aside. Then we disconnected the fan and lifted it up. We put the screws back into the perspective holes after removing the fan. Again, this makes it easier to track all the screws. Remove the two cable guards that are fastened with two Phillips head screws each. Familiarize yourself with the 12 connections going around the contour of the logic board. We'll be disconnecting them all in detail in just a moment. Let's start off with disconnecting the keyboard backlight by lifting up the eyelash lever and pulling out the connection. Next, let's disconnect the Wi-Fi and EyeSight cable. Disconnect the DVD drive. Disconnect the speaker. Now disconnect the LED sleep indicator. It has a little lever you have to pull up. Disconnect the trackpad. Now the keyboard. The keyboard also has a small lever. Pull that up before pulling out the keyboard. Disconnect the express port 34 connection. Disconnect the hard drive disk. Disconnect the battery life indicator. Now we can disconnect the LVDS cable. Gently lift up on the lock and then slide it to the right. Now that all the connections have been removed, locate the six Phillips head screws that are securing the board in place. Go ahead and remove those six Phillips head screws. Push away any of the cables and go ahead and start to lift up the logic board. Once you start lifting up the logic board, you can go ahead and flip it over. There is one more connection in the back. Disconnect the DCN power board. This will re release the logic board. CPU heatsink removal. 
Start off by locating the eight Phillips head screws securing the heatsink. Go ahead and remove those spring loaded Phillips head screws. Once all the screws have been removed, go ahead and lift up and remove the heatsink. We'll need to clean off the dry thermal compound on the heatsink so that the contacts to the CPU dies are correct. Remove the compound from the board as well. This can be done with a cloth rag. CPU heatsink reinstallation. Apply two drops of thermal paste onto each CPU die and GPU die. Make sure not to put too much thermal compound. Go ahead and reinstall the heatsink on top of the compound. Place it correctly and try not to smear it. Reinstall the eight Phillips head spring loaded screws to secure the heatsink. That's it. Logic board reinstallation. Start off by reconnecting the logic board to the DC and power board. Now flip the board over and insert the logic board into the case. Pry any of the cables out of the way. You should now go over all of your connections and make sure that none of them are stuck. Right here we spotted that the LED sleep indicator was trapped so we went ahead and pulled that out with tweezers. There's another trap cable. Okay, we can go ahead and secure the logic board with the six Phillips head screws now. The first cable we're going to reconnect is the keyboard backlight cable. It's located near the left fan. Make sure that the eyelash is up on that socket and push the cable in. Then put down the eyelash, locking it in place. Insert the left fan. Secure it with three Phillips head screws. The screws have, should have been left in place. Go ahead and reconnect the fan. Install the right fan. Again, securing it with three Phillips head screws that were left in place. Reconnect it to the logic board. It is important not to forget these connections. Make sure that they're nice and tight. Connect the LVDS cable next. 
gently slide into the socket. Be very careful as this is one of the most fragile connections. Lock it in. Connect the battery light indicator next. It has an eyelash. Pull up the eyelash. Gently work the cable into the socket. Once it's all the way in, push down on the eyelash and lock it in. Now reconnect the hard drive by simply placing it over and pushing down. Reconnect the express card. This cable also has an eyelash. Lift it up. Push the cable into the socket and put down the eyelash. Next, we'll connect the keyboard. The keyboard is one of the most difficult connections on the entire logic board. It takes a lot of work to get the keyboard to align properly. Working it left to right, make sure it fits all the way into the socket. Once it's all the way into the socket, you can put down the eyelash. Next, the trackpad. Put it over the socket and just push it in with your finger. You should feel it click. Next, we're going to connect this sleep LED light indicator. It also has an eyelash. Make sure that the eyelash is up. Work the connection into the socket and put the eyelash down. Next, the speaker. Put the speaker over the socket and click it in. Connect the DVD drive. Also, just simply click it in. Connect the EyeSight Wi-Fi cable. Work it left to right, going into the socket. Now we'll reinstall the cable guards. There are two of them. They're both secured with two Phillips head screws. You can now reconnect the battery. Gently slide it into the socket. Look down and get a better angle as you need to make sure that this goes in correctly. Place the cover back on. Reinstall the three long Phillips head screws first. Then reinstall the seven short Phillips head screws. 